There's a beautiful quote that I once heard. The day you were born is the day God decided that the world cannot exist without you. And I believe that this really reflects Zami's birth and his 15, almost 15 complete years of his life. Every Shabbos, Zami would come to Shul and he would say Shalom Aleichem to everyone in the Shul. He would always, he would have his people that he knew, he had, the, he had a, with every single person, he had a, a sling. He had his thing, his connection with everyone. As much as we were able to impact the people in our community, it, it paled in comparison to what Zalmi was able to do. When Zalmi walked in on a Shabbos, and usually it was around 11 o'clock or so, he'd walk in, he'd march in with, a, with his confident uh, manner, and he'd come, he'd go, he'd go right to the front, right to my seat, and sit down right beside me. And he would come in and he'd, everybody, the whole shul, I, I, I felt it, everybody was looking right at him. And he would sit over there, and he'd take out a siddur, and he'd start to shake, and make believe he was davening, reading the, in the, in the siddur. And then afterwards, he would go up to say to heal him, and he'd say the whole capital, the whole capital chaf, the entire chapter of Tilim, he said all by himself. He was, he was a chassid, he was a shliach. He was a shliach just like we were shluchim. And he was able to impact in his limited way. He was able to affect the community on a much greater scale than we could even ever think of accomplishing. He cared so much for each one of us. He had a special connection with each member of the family. He always, with each member of the family, he had a special inside joke with them. He would just make everyone feel like he was their favorite. Um, he hated when people were sad. If he saw you serious sitting around the supper table, he would come right away and start singing Nagunim. He would start singing songs. He would put his hand around you. He would give you a whole bunch of kisses till you started laughing. And only once he saw that everyone was happy would he continue on with his busy schedule. But he was just really made our lives so full of meaning and purpose. On my wedding day, by Kabbalah's Panim, my husband came and put the white veil over my head and Zalmi was like being very overprotective and he, he decided that he was gonna sit in the seat right near me. And when he saw them put this white veil, he didn't understand that this was a good thing. And he was thinking like, I better protect my sister. Someone's putting this white veil over her face and without anyone having time to stop him, he yanked the thing off and looked at me like, See, I have your back, I got ya. And I remember feeling a little bit mortified because I was like in my own world, davening and, but it was just this, such a special moment of Zalmi looking out for me and making sure that I was okay. Occasionally I picked him up from Rena and um, that was just a tremendous experience to come a little early and peek through the door and in his program at Rena, he was he was the boss. He was the center of attention. One could see that all the staff adored him and doted on him. One could see the other children looking first to see what Zalmi was going to do before they chose what to do. We met in December of 2016, and this cute little redheaded boy came marching in with this huge personality and with open arms he gave me a hug. Zalmi's love for music and Zalmi's way of bringing everybody together. He just brought a, the biggest smile to everybody's faces. He would put concerts on for us. He was just light. He was a light. There's a saying that says the world is a better place because you were in it and it's so true. My life changed because he was in it and he made me see the world in a different way. He was always such a big personality, and I still feel it every day. The Rena Foundation made an, uh, a brunch, and everyone had a chance to share something about Zalmi. And there were many different volunteers from many different races and religions. There was one woman in the back who refused to speak. Towards the end, she said, can I say something? And she tells this story. She says, look at me. I'm black, I'm very black. And when the world looks at me, all they see is black. But Zami never saw my color, he only saw me. 
and he would come over and he would caress my cheek because he never saw my color. A number of years ago, uh, Zalmi used to love going to a beautiful playground in a very, very unusual place for a rabbi to go to. That was none other than the Burger King. And, uh, you know, what's a rabbi doing at a Burger King? Nothing. So I used to take the nanny there. He loved going. We used to see this, this playground in the back of the Burger King. So Zalmi always wanted to go there. So he went there and uh, he, would, he would make us go there every, every once in a while. So one time my wife says, Avramela, go pick up Zalmi and uh, bring him home. And uh, I, f I left my cell phone home. So I had no choice but to go in and, and bring Zalmi out myself. So I, first I went around and I looked through the windows. I didn't want to walk in. A rabbi shouldn't be going into a non-kosher facility. And uh, when I had no choice, I said, okay, I'll make a dash and I'll say Shema Yisrael. I ran inside and the moment I come inside, I hear somebody shout out, Rabbi Plotkin, what are you doing here? I said, oh no. I said, that's Nikki. What are you doing here, Nikki? So Nikki was a girl from our community that I hadn't seen in about 15 years. Her mother was very involved in our synagogue. Nikki says to, says to me, Rabbi, how, how did you, you come here? She says, you won't believe what happened. I said, what, what happened? She said, uh, you know, I was sitting here in, in, in the Burger King. You know, I intermarried and I have a few children. And uh, my children, of course, are Jewish. But, you know, I was saying to myself, you know, God has forgotten about me. My mother has forgotten about me. Nobody's thinking about me. And I turned to my mother in heaven. I says, Mom, if there's a God out there, if Hashem is thinking about me, send me a sign. Show me that Hashem is thinking about me. And then I just picked up, opened my eyes, and I give a look, and there's Rabbi Plotkin in Burger King. So I, she, she came over to me, we invited her to a Seder, and sure enough, her whole family has made a complete 180 degree turn in their lives, and the whole family now is involved in, in, in Yiddishkeit in a major transformation, all because what? Because Zalmi was going to that playground in, in Burger King. So Zalmi's not here anymore, but his impact it lives on. When you think about God's intent when He creates a world, it's not that everything has to be perfecto the way we see it, because we don't see Hashem's plan. Hashem planted Zalmi into our world for 15 perfect years so that He can be a light onto the world. And that's the greatest gift that Zalmi left with us.